And then in 1979, Texas was the first state that recognized Juneteenth as an official holiday. And this was Texas basically saying, see that, huh? We could be first, huh? See how we were first on that one? <laughs> Did you guys see? Did you guys see how we fucking nailed it? Don't never forget us, huh? Who forgot us? Never forget Texas. <laughs> Nobody will ever forget us. No, Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, what you're about to see was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Uh, I've been doing virtual live stand-up comedy shows, uh, and, uh, and some uh, people, uh, people enjoy it, it seems. Uh, so you'll hear them laughing in the background. That's pretty exciting. Uh, so if you would like to be a part of the live virtual audience, you can do so by purchasing tickets to links are in the description below. These shows happen every Friday night, virtually every Friday night all through the summer and into the fall since we're living in the age of the quarantine. Uh, and, uh, and touring is not particularly a thing that's happening right now. So these virtual stand-up comedy shows is, is how I'm making a living, how I'm putting out these, uh, these, these videos here. Uh, so check out the links, see if you can attend a show. Each week, it's different material, it's a different theme, it's a different show, uh, and each week, we also donate half of the ticket sales to a different grassroots organization, venue, uh, uh, activists or journalists uh, uh, that, uh, that, that are more grassroots and more about the people, um, and, and that, are, that are just as radical as the topics we discuss in this show. So uh, come hang out, come grab those tickets. This week, the, the, the episode that you're watching, we donated half of the ticket sales to Level Up Studios in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They are a creative playground. They're a community-oriented creative playground. They're a POC-run uh, venue, uh, dance studio, recording studio, and they're all about the community. So we wanted to make sure that uh, that that we were we were able to to help them out in their endeavors as they've helped helped me out a couple times uh, in my endeavors as well. I've known them for a long time. They're a great group of folks. So if you want to make additional donations to them, if you weren't able to make it to the show and you want to make some additional donations, go to leveluppgh.com. The link is in the description below. Now, if you want free tickets to come to these shows, because you can totally get free tickets to come to these shows, you can become a sustaining member over at krishmohan.com. By becoming a sustaining member, either directly on the website, on Patreon, or on Bandcamp, you get exclusive unreleased bonus stand-up comedy material. You get early access to the longer, bigger chunks of Forkful of Noodles that end up getting broken up into these episodes. You get the full episodes as, as early access. Um, you, get, uh, you get special little, little merch stuff. You get bonus video content. Uh, you get a bunch of crazy shit by becoming a sustaining member. So go to krishmohan.com, check it out there, and, uh, and and think of becoming a sustaining member. It helps out the show, it helps out a good cause as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, once again, krishmohan.com. All right, now, on to this week's episode. Uh, today is Juneteenth, you guys. We're celebrating Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth to everybody. Uh, so it's a Juneteenth, also called Jubilee Day or, or Freedom Day. Uh, and this is the day to celebrate the official freedom of black slaves at the end of the Civil War. And to really understand the magnitude and importance of this holiday, we have to understand its history. And this begins with Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Now, word had not gotten out about freeing slaves to all states because, believe it or not, Twitter didn't exist in 1863. Very shocking. What? I, I, it's inc I know, it's, uh, this is like incredible news, but it's okay, Come on, guys. Jack Dorsey, you're slacking. Uh, I know, Jack Dorsey, <laughs> Jack Dorsey needs to get out and uh, build a time machine so Twitter can exist in 1863. But it's okay, we can cut Dorsey a little bit of slack. They did have a different bird-based messaging system uh, called Carrier Pigeons, which I believe worked on the power of magic and magnetism. Uh, so that's cool. 
uh, which are two things magnets, that human beings. How do they work? Exactly. We don't. Nobody knows. Humans don't understand the power of magnets or magic. Uh, so, so because of that, the last state uh, that still had slavery after the proclamation was signed was uh, Texas, and there is speculation. This was because four scores and seven years were just not large enough measurements for Texas to care about. <laughs> <laughs> because they, they like it big. They like it big down there in Texas. <laughs> but uh, they, as, as much as they did, they, they did eventually get the message, uh, right? Juneteenth in 1865, after two years uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation was actually signed, 1,800 federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to ensure that black slaves would be free and, be, and make sure that they're all taken care of. And this is, the, this is probably the only time that I'm going to say this, you guys, but hot damn, give it up for the troops, huh? Come on. <laughs> give it up for the troops, you guys. <laughs> Now, General, uh, General Gordon Granger, when he landed on Texas soil, he read General Orders Number 3, which stated, the people of Texas are informed in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. That's awesome, right? See, I mean, let's, let's see how succinct that was. That was nice, right? Like, I feel like more legislation needs to be like this, you know, right <laughs> to the point. Well, Just you see, it's, like so, it it's so succinct, it would fit perfectly in a tweet. It would fit perfectly in a tweet. That's tweetable <laughs> material. Right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect tweet. That's a beautiful tweet right there. <laughs> it's a perfect, beautiful tweet, right? And we need more, we need more legislation that you can fit on a tweet, you know? I, I, I feel like if that was that, we would get so much done. Like, you know, under general order number 1538, the citizens of America have a message that under the decree that this is a government for, of, and by the people, we say, fuck the police. You know? <laughs> 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 Would be something else. See how nice that sounds, <laughs> you know? Does that sound great? I feel like that sounds great. <laughs> now, look, it took two and a half years for Americans to go, oh, fuck, did we, did we forget about Texas? Oh, holy shit. Okay, guys, somebody needs to get down to Texas before they fuck up this emancipation for us, okay? <laughs> And this is probably why Texas has a Napoleonic complex as a state, you know, because and so now they need to make themselves so big that we never forget about them. It's a pretty it's, big place. It's a very big place. That's this is the origin of everything big in Texas, you know. In today's society, this news wouldn't have taken two years, right? There would have been a tweet, and then in seconds, every city in Texas would have a block party so large that the words, the South will rise again, would be drowned out by Kendrick Lamar telling you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the way it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the general order uh, also said that freed black folks should stay on as employees on the plantation, right? They now need to get paid for the work they do. So this means that for a little while, for just a little bit, the United States government was basically the union for free freed slaves, which is, which is great, which is very cool that they were the union for the freed slaves. Is it, is it kind of fun when the 1800s outlefts 2020? It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting to see that kind of thing it's exciting to see how much we've backslid into history it's nice it's great it's fun it's good time it's a good time <laughs> but but here's the thing even under this order right uh there were still some slave masters that did not free their slaves they instead kept their slaves and kept them working for free until the end of the harvest season now that's an interesting contrast that rich white landowners didn't get shot in the face for blatantly breaking the law, right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just seen as good capitalists, you guys, right? Standing up for the right to earn money 
off the free labor of others. You know, it's just the capitalist thing to do right there. Now, <laughs> yeah, 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 you got to support that economy, right? <laughs> Now, Juneteenth celebrations usually include barbecues, parades, music, right? It is basically a block party, but it wasn't widely celebrated or even recognized as a holiday in most states until, uh, until you had 1979 happen. And then in 1979, Texas was the first state that recognized Juneteenth as an official holiday. And this was Texas basically saying, see that, huh? We could be first, huh? See how we were first on that one? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see, did you guys see how we fucking nailed it? Don't never forget us, huh? Who forgot us? Never forget Texas. <laughs> Nobody will ever forget us. It's like, oh my God, we, yeah, we won't, relax. But uh, in 2020, uh, Pennsylvania just officially made it a, a holiday. It's an official state holiday in 2020. And there's still discussions going on in Congress whether or not to make this a national holiday. Look, it took about 38 seconds to make 4th of July a national holiday, where a bunch yeah. of white folks, yeah, you know, it's just a bunch of white folks drinking too much, blowing shit up, and wrecking the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Facing no consequences. In 150 years, we're still discussing whether it's cool for black people to take the day off to celebrate their freedom with barbecues, music, speeches, fanfare, and no explosives. Just nothing is exploding. <laughs> which I think is very cool, which is how you should celebrate your independence. You know, you shouldn't blow shit up. <laughs> Seems counterproductive to independence. Juneteenth is actually considered as uh, America's second Independence Day, and yet there's still a debate on making this a national holiday. I mean, for fuck's sake, there are more Congress people willing to celebrate Flag Day than Juneteenth. <laughs> you know, no one cares about your country's brand and cloth form. All right, the yeah. honor, <laughs> yeah, the honor of your flag went away when you put the stars and stripes on underwear and sold it at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done honoring the flag, right? <laughs> you know? Look, recognizing Juneteenth as a national holiday would mean that you have to recognize as a country that slavery is part of your past. And it's permeated our presence with prison slavery and the income divide. And ignoring this is only ensuring that con Congress is going to be complicit with its future. Not only that, but it would mean that they would have to pay people time and a half for working on a national holiday. And if we know anything about the federal government, it's that they're really, really good with money, you guys. Like they're really, <laughs> <laughs> like they really know how to balance those budgets, right? I mean, think about it. If we paid people time and a half, how are corporate warmongers going to fill their gold bathtubs full of money to feel real love. <laughs> Just mean, you gotta think about those yeah. things. Look, whether- Priorities, not, priorities. Yeah, exactly, yeah, you gotta have those priorities. Look, whether or not our corrupt leaders say so or not, I say going forward, we the people celebrate Juneteenth as citizens of a country standing with our brothers and sisters in solidarity, right? We can recognize our past, learn, to make, to, to make our present a lot better and our future a lot brighter. So happy Juneteenth, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, give it that share, and make sure that you're subscribed to this channel to get more videos. I put out videos on a weekly basis. I put out new episodes of Fork Full of Noodles once a week, sometimes even twice a week if I'm feeling kind of crazy. Uh, these are the more scripted uh, history and philosophy based comedy shows that I do in front of a live virtual audience that you can be a part of by clicking that link in the ticket and getting your ticket today. They're only five bucks. They happen every single Friday uh, into the summer and into the fall. Um, not just that, but I also release uh, a show called Road Reflections, which is a more looser, rantier show where I talk about the week's news. I, I do a, a segment called The Dispatch, which is uh, uh, more about current events. It's, it's a little bit shorter, uh, current events, news topics, 
uh, that is part of my podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And I'm also going to be releasing some interview clips on this channel as well uh, from my podcast, Taboo Table Talk. So there's going to be a bunch of crazy shit coming at you uh, that you don't want to miss. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel. If you want to become a sustaining member, if you want to grab tickets to a live virtual stand-up comedy event coming up in the near future, if you want to get a, a stand-up comedy album of mine, if you want to check out past episodes of this show, subscribe to the podcast, uh, get emails from me, wh whatever you want, it's, there's, there's a one-stop shop to do it, and that's krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N, krishmohan.com. That's a one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. You can become a sustaining member and get early access to Forkful of Noodles. You can uh, get, get unreleased stand-up comedy material. You can get free tickets to live, uh, vir virtual live stand-up comedy events. You can do a bunch of crazy shit on, on KrishMohan.com. So uh, go check it out there. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Until next week. We'll